Hi there. Um, there's a there's a machine running in there that you can probably hear in the background, and my PC is on, which I usually turn it off when I'm recording because I try and have nicer audio. But this is a more casual space here on Side Hustle, and so I hope you can forgive me. And also, I failed to get a video up last week, which was not intentional, I promise. So um, I hope you can forgive me for that one too. I had been working on a new lookbook, which you will be seeing on Thursday but I kind of crashed and burned trying to edit it last week, get it all done on time um, on, for my deadline, and I missed my deadline. Um, and so I decided to take the time to truly finish it the way I wanted it, I wanted to and to upload that video that was supposed to be last week's video on this Thursday instead. So you'll be seeing a new lookbook on Thursday, but before that I have a little bit of a strange other video for you here, which is to say hello there and welcome to Side Hustlin', a sort of different series here on my channel that may be new to some of you. I feel like there are quite a few new people since May, which is the last time I've made a video like this, so if you are new to this series of mine here on the channel, you might be like, what the heck is this weird, existential, like, over-the-top, over-dramatic, weirdly poetic video, uh, stream of consciousness kind of diary entry sort of vlog thing? Um, that's kind of what my side hustling series is. Basically, I started documenting my like journey doing side hustles in the sense of like doing YouTube as a job or trying to do YouTube as a job back a couple of years ago when I was still building my channel. Not that I'm not doing that now, but um, so I've just kind of documented my progress, growing my channel, my business, my brand, as it were, um, and also my fiction writing career, which I don't really have one yet, but um, we're working on it and eventually we we may get there. But I just wanted to hop on on the start of this video and say hello and kind of introduce it a little bit just because it has been a while since I did a side hustle and for anyone new to the series um, it, it makes more sense if you start at the beginning than just see this video out of context probably. But here I am, hello, here's a little diary entry from me from here in 2020.
why do we love gardens so much? A wild of our own design, contained, ordered, chosen, walled in, safe. Usually I visit these gardens several times in summer. This year, just the once. Masked, distanced, timed, but still lovely. The bees didn't seem to have noted any difference but I could feel it. In this safe place, one designed to be beautiful, but even here, I was afraid. Fear feels quite familiar to me in its own way, even if it comes in ever new and exciting flavors now. I've been outside little this year, once to these gardens to see summer, and once to the wild, to see fall. says this year has been different. Nature hasn't noticed. I went to check. I almost recommend it. Visiting the grandest nature nearby, hell, just leaving the house at all at this point, offers a perspective being indoors in your head all the time constantly does not. Nothing is big compared to the ocean. I am insignificant to a mountain. To nature, success is not monetary or determined by algorithms or defined by what other people can think of you. It is survival. All you have to do to succeed is to survive. And if that's not a 2020 mood, then I don't know what is. 
Hi. Me again. Uh, I told you this was going to be a more nebulous, pretentious, sort of weird poetry slash diary entry kind of video. Um, it happens sometimes here on Side Hustlin'. And uh, actually, I think I could try and talk about the other things I want to, the other things I want to say today. But I think it's actually just going to be better if I read my notes. So please forgive me. I'm going to switch over back to some nature and maybe cats um, while I just go ahead and read you my notes in a more scripted format today. Hopefully you won't mind. In some ways, side hustling is always about fear because while for a lot of people, I think their biggest fear is being alone, ending up alone, dying alone or whatever. My biggest fear is not being successful. And so far, I haven't been. Of course, what does that mean? What success means is different to every person, but to me it means not being in debt, thank you student loans, um, having a stable financial situation and a home of my own that can't be taken away from me. That's how I define success. And never reaching that definition of success, of independent stability, is what I fear most, at my very core. It's not necessarily always my most pressing desire or want. I want to write. I want a cookie. I want my business to grow. I want to try dating because... So what I want from day to day, hour to hour, can vary. But what I fear most is never reaching success, never attaining sustainable independence and security. So because I have not achieved my personal definition of success, quote unquote, I feel I must be failing. After all, if you're not succeeding, you are failing. And it does kind of suck to feel like every day that goes by where I haven't won the lottery is some sort of personal failure, a failure in my very self as a person um, that I've like worked hard and I didn't get where I wanted to go. Ergo, my best must not be enough and I must not be enough. Somehow I still have it very drilled into the bones of my person that a certain level of wealth, security, and yes, even outside acclaim and validation even are what give a person value. And therefore, without those things, I don't have any value. I think it's a common fear, perhaps a little bit less common than the classic, unless somebody else wants me, I must be worthless chestnut. I mean, I couldn't care less if I end up, quote unquote, alone in a shack in the woods, as long as it's my shack and no one can come kick me out of it, which is still, of course, an incorrect mindset, naturally. I think I have a lot of trouble understanding rest, how much is like allowed. The structure of a school system gives you set times, this many hours in class, and you get this much time for resets, recess or lunch, um, this many hours in school, then this many hours at home. Even in the workplace, you get like a 15 minute break or a lunch break, which we're fought for and not naturally a guaranteed thing, by the way. But when you're working for yourself, you can technically have as much rest as you'd like, except every minute you feel bad about it. <laughs> so determining how much rest I am allowed or need can or should take is not easy for me. An odd thing about my job is, is that it's not really competitive. There can be many people making similar content, but technically there's an infinite amount of room for all and small variances, channel to channel and person to person mean there's a variety for everyone. So as a creator, I'm never competing with other creators. I'm fighting a robot. I really do think anyone who says they completely understand the algorithm and can manipulate it is kind of kidding themselves because even the people who design these things don't have like necessarily full control over them anymore or seem able to say exactly how they work. But my career, and therefore livelihood, or lack thereof, is still at the whim of a robot. There are things I could do to please that robot, like be shouty or negative and such, because that is the kind of flash bang the robot seems to like. But 2020 needs no more negativity, does it? It's got enough on its own. And the thing about the platform and trends is, is that they can be updated and changed all the time. So really all I can do is focus on making things that I would want to see, things I like, improving my own work as much as I can, and hoping the robot randomly chooses to show anyone the resulting projects. The trouble is, in the last few months, I have attempted to increase the quality of my work without going ahead and increasing the amount of time I give myself to complete it. <laughs> Oops. At some point, higher quality does come down to taking more time, getting more B-roll footage, getting more than one take or a different camera angle, writing a script just versus live commentating a segment, which is 
this is kind of a mix of those. And of course, the more involved or complex a particular project is, the more steps there are to film and then discuss. Because videos must go up weekly, a part of the algorithm I do pay respect to, um, <clears throat> usually, uh, it can leave me feeling very rushed to get it all done in the nick of time, as opposed to having the leisurely timeline of, oh, if that shot wasn't quite centered, I can do it again, or um, I should film another take from above, or I would like to give myself more time, but I also need to take more time to rest. So where am I supposed to find all this time? I'm always talking about me needing more of it, and I still haven't discovered how to create it from the ether. It is still so easy for me to dismiss my own work and worth. I just make silly little sewing videos and the world is a dumpster fire. However, I need YouTube videos to survive. Not that I need to make them to survive, I, I need to watch them to survive. Yep, I watch a lot of YouTube, or listen at the very least. Ergo, by making YouTube videos, I may be helping someone else who also needs that moment of escape. Therefore, my work is not useless and it has value. I know my work has value to me, but that is not enough to feel secure. And I also need my work to create value for me too, aka make money so I can pay for dental appointments and give banks money for the education I felt was mandatory but shouldn't have maybe been so. And hopefully one day have my own place to live in slash at. But I also feel like my work should have value to other people as well because otherwise it feels selfish. And there's a balance in there somewhere between all of these things, but I think the natural inclination, or at least my natural inclination, is to feel that because I'm not seeing the, say, financial return associated with full-on wild success and recognition, that I must not have the kind of value to others that would justify me spending my time making art, I suppose? But again, that's not how anything actually works. Assigning more value to numbers than they deserve is bad, but we also crave a good number because we are conditioned to rating systems, getting a grade. It's easy to feel like your bank account or your debt balance is your report card and that without the right marks you are failing at life. But your life is not a book report or a chemistry exam and the numbers just don't tell the whole story. These kind of thoughts are something that I have been struggling with for over a decade. And so talk about a lot here inside Heslin. I think I repeat these revelations again and again for myself because I must, until they finally stick, sink in. I believe people have an inherent value whether they are quote unquote productive or successful or not. But I still struggle to extend that belief to myself. I doubt I am alone in this. 2020 is an interesting set of fears, but we, you and I, we are not going to give up. <clears throat> Thank you all for watching this video today, especially if you got this far into this video. I know it's very different from my other content, but I just like to kind of keep a diary vlog entry for myself. Hopefully, you know, as I always say um, <clears throat> in these videos, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to look back on these as the before times before I had achieved some of my goals that I'm hoping to eventually achieve. And I can look back on little me now and know that I've gotten somewhere in some ways. And thank you for coming along on that ride with me. And I will see you all again for a real video real soon. Bye. An extra special thank you to Che, Karina, Ellen, Carol, Lynn, Margaret, Maria, Nancy, Rhonda, Swingularity, Brianne, Lacey, and Beatrice. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to all of my patrons, and thank you to all of you who watch these videos.